Good morning. It is Sunday morning. It's five degrees. It rained throughout the night a little bit last night. Uh, it sucks, man. <laughs> it's it's brutal. Uh, you know, we had a good run going. We were getting that barley. It was getting close to, uh, must have been getting close to dry. Uh, maybe, maybe around 16. Wasn't taking very long in the dryer. The yard was, uh, you know, had been holding up all year. Like we hadn't made no tracks, no mud sticking to tires, nothing. And that's kind of a first for, you know, the last four years have been rough. And uh, yeah, then the rain started, what, I think two days ago. And it's been brutal. I did get out and I did manage to get uh, 320 acres here sprayed. We think it's probably going to be a pretty good time to do that this year. <clears throat> so we combined this back in August and uh, the weed regrowth has been phenomenal. <laughs> Like, I, I drove a combine across here the other day just to save some highway travel. And uh, there was lots of uh, white cockle and stuff coming. So <clears throat> we did get that done. I uh, We're still planning to spray some more. The, the long-term forecast does look good for, like, freezing temperatures. And it kind of looks okay for rain. But what we've really been noticing is uh, even if they don't predict it, you get it. And if they predict it, you're probably going to get it. So... Hopefully we get another week or two here where it straightens out, but I mean, there would be no combining today. It's soaking wet. Yesterday, we tried to burn that pile of uh, trees over there because they're gonna build the shop here in October, the, or the shed. And we thought that pile is so big, if we burn it once they build the shed, it could actually, there could be enough heat to damage the tin, so. But well, as, we, as soon as we started that going, it started to rain really hard, so it kind of went out. It's still smoldering, and uh, we'll get it going here maybe again today or tomorrow. <sighs> but for now, we got to get over here. I'm going to get this dry, uh, dryer fired up, and then I'll head up and unload this load of grain. See how full that bin is, and uh, we'll get the day going. As I said, it's like 5 degrees. <clears throat> it's sloppy, it's wet. This is this is the year in the piece or the time of year in the piece where if you uh, if you're susceptible to the flu you're going to get it and with the uh, with the whole coronavirus thing no nobody wants to take the risk at all of getting sick and then because uh, you know you're walking you're walking down the street and you go and you just go give her one of these and everybody just poof like disappears right it's like a magic trick so. Nobody wants the sniffles. Nobody wants a scratchy throat. Nobody wants anything. So we got bundled up. It's jacket. It's sweater. It's, you know, hood on. And uh, keep, keep healthy. Looks like we have sufficient oil in the old girl. Dad changed the starter out this year. So uh, we've had no issues with the starting of the tractor. Unfortunately, it hasn't had a cab kit or a seat done, but it doesn't get any uh, miles anymore. It just gets hours. So it sits in here. Oof, I don't need that on. Who put that on? Gee whiz. And the reason we like it on our dryer, so this is, is way too much horsepower for this dryer. Way too much. But we can select the PTO RPM and then just run it at 540 at almost no actual engine RPM. This is the uh, load I had left over the on the truck overnight. It was I dried it yesterday. So same way as all the other greens, you get your pre-weighed sample barley. It's 225 grams. Make sure it falls in there. Turn the lead, turn the dial so the needle goes all the way to the left. It's moving. 
So call that 21. Come over to your book. Find 21. But we'll find on this side because we gotta go to 14 degrees. So 13.6 is what I dried it down to. <laughs> There's two uh, separate numbers, I guess. Feed barley, you can dry it down to about 14.8 and, and, and it'll be acceptable. If you're growing a malt variety, which we are, but we're, we're pretty sure this ain't gonna make malt, you gotta dry it down to 13.5. So this is 13.6 anyways. And uh, we're not too scientific about this because it's probably gonna all be feed anyways. A couple things, the price of feed to the price of malt isn't that different. I think feed is about $8. Uh, malt I've heard as high as 10, but I don't know if anybody actually got that. And uh, malt comes with its whole slew of challenges as well. I think it, to be accepted for malt, the barley has to germ at least 98%. Uh, now, when you send your samples out, this has happened to us before. We had about 15,000 bushels of barley Alright, so that load I started this morning, it's only been in the dryer for about an hour and 10 minutes, but uh, it is dry. It's about 38 degrees. Now that is too hot. They, you know, they don't recommend you go that hot for seed, but uh, we're not interested in seed or malt because the feed prices are high and uh, we have seed left over from last year. So to save on drying time, propane, circulations to the dryer, we just turn the heat up and get her dried. Uh, so it was about 39 degrees. And uh, I'm actually not sure at what point the elevator does their bushel weight, if it's like after they run it through their machine or not. I'm gonna do it here now. This is just out of the dryer. And uh, so we had good heavy bushel weight in our wheat. It was about 65 pounds. Uh, we'll see what the bushel weight is in the barley. So you got your half liter. You do the grains the same way, zero it. There is a scale or a funnel that goes on top of here. Uh, we don't have it. I don't think it's that important. I just dump some in there. Uh, so you dump it in until it overfills. Then you take some sort of a striker. I just use this ruler. You don't want to tap the cup at this point too much or actually really at all. And once across, boom. Weigh it again. So we're at 336. Go to our book. This is the wheat chart. 336 means, well, uh, so now this is not as accurate as the elevator. And we often find we're out just a little bit from what they say it is or the feed mills or wherever this ends up going. But with my quick calculation, this barley weighs 56 pounds. The standard bushel weight of barley is uh, 48. So it's hard to know what the actual yield is in the field. If we assume it's about 40 to 45 bushels per acre, but the barley is, you know, effectively eight pounds heavier, you know, that's another, uh, I don't know what that is, another, what, two, two, three percent or something. Okay, if it's 48, 4.8 would be 10. So it's like another 20%, I guess. Yeah, I think it might be another 20%. So, uh, and, and that's the way it is. So that just means when you load up your truck with grain, you'll have a lot less grain in there and uh, you'll get your legal weight. So like our truck, we can haul about 40 ton legally because our truck's pretty heavy, 40, 41, 42 ton. And, uh, you know, in some years where you have to have a big hump on the truck in every hopper, this year you probably won't even see it. We are quite surprised about that because of the drought, but the, you talk to some people and they say in a dry year, bushel weight will be up and yield will be down. But like I say, if uh, 4.8 pounds is 10%, that's going to be 9.6, 48, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So yeah, we're almost 20% more. So if we think it's running 40, then uh, yeah, it's 20% more than 40. I'm not a mathematician, whatever that is. But we'll let that cool off. We gotta let it cool down. You wanna bring it down to within 10 degrees of uh, outside temperature. 
So the grain was at 38 degrees. Outside temperature right now is probably 10. So I'm gonna have to let it cool for probably half an hour. Uh, on that, uh, to cool it, you just turn the fire off and then it'll still circulate and do its thing. While it's blowing, you know, that huge volume of cold air in there. That finishes pushing out the heat, uh, pushing out the moisture that's been already removed from the kernel because that's one thing you want to be careful with with the batch dryer. If you get it to dry and it's 38 degrees and you shut it off and unload it and put it in the bin, all that moisture hasn't had enough time to get away yet. So on uh, in the early morning and when it gets cold, when we dry in the winter, you can really see a huge steam cloud coming off of there. And that's all the, uh, all the moisture leaving the kernel. And if you don't give it time to cool it back down and, and whip away all that water from the dryer, you effectively just remove the water and it's now it's outside of the kernel and then you unload it and it's sitting on the outside of the kernel. It reabsorbs, the grain's warm already and then you got heating right away. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> 